Hi, it's Chris from Open Photo. Thanks for joining me in which is the second video in this series. Uh, if you saw the first one, I was talking about my first ever camera at the age of 12 back in 1968-69, which was the Cosmic 35. Uh, today I want to show you my second and third cameras. Um, which was the Zeniths and it started with the Zenith B which was at the time um, quite a breakthrough because it was a single lens reflex camera SLR um, but it was made for the amateur market really um, so it, it was very affordable really sturdy camera um, a uh, a USSR uh, build as as the others are and uh, it was a, m a much loved um, uh, tool for many many people uh, it was the first one that gave you the option of unscrewing your lanes no bayonet fittings um, and if you could afford it you bought new lenses um, it came this is the original standard 50 mil lens which was the Indostar lens uh, and for me it was uh, a little bit of a update from the cosmic because um, it actually had a aperture that opened up to 3.5 uh, which uh, the cosmic and it was maximum was four so it gave me a little bit extra a little bit brighter faster lens uh, the uh, speed on here was on this uh, controller at the top um, fairly limited um, from 60th up to 500 which is obviously very slow for today's cameras but uh, it did the job uh, wind on um, shutter and the uh, shutter release was on the top and it made a lovely mechanical sound uh, move it on and your wind up uh, your wind back was done you pop that little um, lever up and you could wind the film back um, it ripped your fingers to bits when you did it though uh, it the other improvement was hinged back which uh, the cosmic didn't have and it actually had a blind shutter rather than a blade shutter on it um, and this kind of um, was a now a familiar setup for for most SLR cameras that that followed. Um, obviously, they they had uh, great improvements on them as as the time went on. But that was the basic build of it. Um, I had one of these for. Uh, a couple of years um, into the 70s and when Zenith bought out the uh, Zenith E um, I traded mine in and got a an upgrade uh, I've got a Zenith E here um, it looks very similar to the Zenith B it's got the famous Zenith um, ribbed fabric um, a covering to the body um, which is still lovely to hold um, today uh, and he, the whole chassis of it was exactly the same but they'd customised it to actually fit in a photosensitive cell in here for a light meter uh, not through the lens light metering it actually had a little window on the side here uh, where you got two there's two needles basically that when you adjusted your speed and your aperture uh, you basically had to line them up and that would tell you it was a um, the correct exposure uh, which was a big advancement for me at the time against um, the other the other two cameras because I had had to use on those a handheld light meter this is a new version of a handheld light meter uh, and I still use one of these today as a double check because um, 
I know that actually the uh, light meter on this is um, not that accurate um, probably because of age more than anything but at the time it was actually not too bad um, and uh, the other upgrade really was the standard lens from the Instar lens became the Helios lens and again it kind of crept up um, to a, uh, to, uh, a, a point 0.2 um, uh, f lens which again was going to get uh, brighter lens uh, faster uh, it uh, was still though a uh, f16 that was the the maximum at the other end of the scale but much better lens um, a bigger uh, piece of glass on the front so it's letting in more light um, got much better results by really adding that lens on it the most important thing was the lens because that's what your image was going to be captured through um, regardless of what the body was so uh, that got me through my college years uh, I was tempted into lots of other cameras but being at college I had very little money um, and uh, I had to make do uh, with this which um, I have fond memories on it was uh, a stable uh, camera uh, built really well um, in the USSR uh, which a lot of the cameras that day uh, at that time were were being made in the USSR uh, so what I've done um, I went out and f put some film in the camera um, some Ilford uh, FP4 125 ASA Put them in all three cameras and went out to test them out to see what they were like today um, unfortunately the uh, zenith b um, failed in the field um, as all these things is it's not when you're in the, until you're in a real life situation you find the faults and the fault was that the speed ring was just spinning round. Um, I realized it wasn't actually moving the, uh, the the actual speed settings it was just literally moving the bezel that goes around here so I couldn't actually use that one so th there was no film went through that uh, I have actually um, done the repair on this and it is now working well so I may try this one again I've um, taken my uh, negative negatives my film and I've done a digital scan on those uh, when I say digital scan uh, that's because I'm not using a traditional scanner I'm actually digitizing them through my Nikon uh, 850 uh, digital camera uh, utilizing the 50 megapixel full frame sensor that's in there and I will do a video to show you how I actually do that uh, it does allow me to go straight into doing uh, digital editing uh, the next section of, the, of this video I'm going to go on screen and just show you some of the results that I got off of um, the the cosmic and the uh, uh, the Zenithy. So I'm on my desktop. I'm just going to open my Lightroom Classic up. Um, I've already loaded up the Cosmic 35 uh, test film that I did uh, the other day. Uh, what we have here is we have the negative that was um, shot on the uh, Nikon 850 and digitized that's been pulled in uh, I've then done a uh, uh, a reversal to make them into a positive uh, the green tinge that is to these is because uh, I've held the RGB um, setting 
uh, from the camera. Uh, I do that because if we're going to make any uh, adjustments or changes you need to still be in RGB rather than in grayscale um, so all your um, developing controls uh, in either Lightroom or Photoshop needs to be in RGB uh, so let's just have a look one thing that came out of um, this test on the old Cosmic 35 was let's fit to the screen uh, I had light bleed coming through the back of the camera um, not surprising for a camera that's over 50 years old um, <coughs> and uh, yeah I think that the Cosmic 35 is now going to be retired out and left as a no no nostalgic um, uh, display piece rather than actually using it uh, however it's got a very interesting quality about it uh, the other thing that I've noticed is that um, even though I had the focus on infinity it's not that sharp it's it's pretty soft um, image that's come from it but um, I thought I'd just pursue these a little and see if I can work with what, what I've got. Um, I was quite interested when I did a portrait version that obviously the light bleeds now coming through from the side. And it's, yeah, got, got quite an interesting quality about it. Uh, I've pulled that through and done a little bit of editing on it. Um, this was done... Um, through uh, Silver Effects Pro, just put a blue tint to it. Uh, I haven't done an awful lot, but yeah, it's kind of got a quality to it that um, you could work with um, to create a, a nice collection. Uh, I did also look at this shot, which is obviously completely out of focus, but uh, and light bleed coming in at the bottom. But these reeds um, was were really quite nice when they're they're, they're left like that, and the reflections in the water. Uh, again, did a um, a render uh, through Silver Effects Pro with a uh, with a blue filter on it, and yeah, there was something about that I quite liked. Uh, I did decide to go to the next stage of editing just on that one photograph and thought we could be a little bit more artistic with it and if I open f uh, Photoshop up I've already loaded the image up and that is a combination of using that um, Cosmic 35 shot um, and also a digital shot on the two and you'll see that down on the side you can see I've layered everything off um, to create this uh, multi-image. Multi uh, I'm not going to really go any further with the Cosmic 35. I think um, uh, it's had its day but you could you know play with images um, to give a very nostalgic um, film look to them. Um, I hope you find that one interesting. Uh, I'm just going to go back. Uh, in terms of the Zenith E, uh, I did some tests on that, uh, ran it through. Again, the Helios lens that um, I had on that if I go pull up one of the shots um, there's fall off on the Helios lens to one side so although it's quite um, sharp it, in, uh, in the center and the right hand side the um, left hand side is completely um, out of focus uh, and it seems to be the same on all of all of the shots that I took. Uh, as I said, that is down to the lens, 
uh, something's gone out of position on the lens uh, however again um, just put it through and into the night collection and silver effects pro just done a very simple edit on here again that that fall off on the left hand side has actually created a, a very interesting effect so yeah nothing's lost again when you actually think you know a camera nearing 50 years old um uh it, it does have a quality of its own uh, i did try another one not quite as successful um again i was looking at this image here Again, we've got that fall off on the uh, on the left hand side and there seems to be a bit of light bleed also coming through the the center um, I'm not quite sure what's actually caused that but um, I ran that in on silver effects pro and again it's uh, you know you could do work on that and uh, create something uh, but um, yeah interesting exercise again I think the uh, Zenith E will be retired out mainly because of the, the lens um, I'm not going to really get anything I particularly want uh, in the future out of it however if I do want a shot with um, big fall off on the left hand side that's the lens to use and the camera to use um, so yeah just a few examples um, of my test of the old cameras um i hope you find them interesting thanks for looking